Scientific notation is something that, a uh, big surprise, comes up a lot in science. And that's just because uh, in science we tend to have very big or very small numbers. Okay, so I could say that it's, you know, it's useful for very large or very small numbers. So this is just a way to write things in a much more compact way. Okay, so for example, uh, what if I want the speed of light? So this is, I mean, I'm a physics person, so uh, the speed of light, for example, is something we talk about a lot. And the speed of light is three, zero, 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 I hope I got the right number, uh, yep, yeah, uh, meters per second. That sounds really complicated, but it turns out it's uh, 300,000 kilometers per second. Or sorry, 300, uh, yeah, 300,000 kilometers per second or 300 million meters per second. So that's how fast light goes. It goes really quick. But if I want to actually look at this and write it in a more compact way, it turns out I can write it much simpler and it means the exact same number by saying 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Turns out this is the same thing. This is because I'm taking 3, that's the number 3 here, and I'm multiplying it by 100 million. Now 100 million is the same thing as just taking, if you want to write uh, numbers, like large numbers, hopefully you've learned that all you have to do is just multiply by 10 lots of times. So you just count the number of zeros you want and that's how you get it. So there's 8 zeros, so I say 10 to the power of 8. That's the same thing. So this is the reason for uh, scientific notations to write really big numbers in a really compact way. And we can do the same thing with really ridiculously small numbers. So remember the idea is to use the least amount of numbers, so the least amount of symbols, to write the same thing. That's the main idea here. So I'll show you something, uh, maybe something that's small. So something that's really, really small. So this here was an example for large things. Maybe I'll label that for large things. But if I want an example for small things, well then I can do something like uh, another physics example is one nanometer. You might have heard of people doing you know, nano science or nanotechnology. And that's because they're working with things on the nanometer scale. And nano means very, very small. You might have heard, uh, for example, the you know, iPod nano. It's just to imply it's really small. Now one nanometer actually has a number. It's actually zero point uh, zero, 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 one meters. Make sure I got it right here. So that's going to be the same thing. This is really long to write. See, if you had to write this a lot of times, it would get really annoying to count the number of zeros. So a nice easy way to do it is, again, I can rewrite this as one times ten to the minus nine meters. That's the same thing as one nanometer. Now I want to talk about how we actually converted. How did I get from you know this 300 million to 3 times 10 to the 8? How did I get from this point 0, 0, 0, you know, with 8 zeros, and yet I have 10 to the minus 9? Why is it a minus? Yes, I'll show you an example of how to convert. So let's actually do something with converting. So I'll do an example with converting, and I'll just explain as I go along. I don't think there's a real trick for it. It's just a matter of doing it a few times, and you'll get it. So what if I want to write some huge number? So maybe like four, two, one, maybe say for example, um, zero, 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 zero. Maybe I throw in that one more. Let's just say I want to write this number in scientific notation. See, because this number is really annoying to use. It's awkward. Now scientific notation has to be the exact same number. I'm not trying to round off this number. I'm trying to just write it itself. So the trick I use is I always do uh, what I tell my students, it's like a non-zero number sandwich, so to speak. I try to find the rightmost non-zero number, so that would be this one here, and I take the leftmost non-zero number, and those are the numbers I'm going to need to write. I'm going to need to write these numbers here. So I'm going to write 4, 2, 1. They're important. The rest of the zeros we can deal with in a second. Okay, so this 4, 2, 1, I need to write them. And what we normally do, in fact what we always do for scientific notation, we put a dot here, we put a decimal here. We say 4.21. Now we say times 10 to the power of something. Now the trick is, I kind of look at, well, where is my decimal right now? Right now there's a decimal point sort of sitting here. In other words, I can say 0.0 if I want. It's right here. Now on the right side here, I have it right after the 4. In other words, it's right here. I have to look at 
how many points that I have to move to get from 4.21 to where the decimal really is, which is over here. So I count the number of decimals from 4.21 until this end point. So for example, I would start off here and I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 spots over. So that means I would say 4.21 times 10 to the 9. That's the same number. So again, I first of all do a non-zero sandwich, so to speak. So I take the rightmost non-zero number, the leftmost non-zero number, and I write all the numbers in between. I put a point after the first number, and then I look at, well, how do I move then from this 4.21, which I want to have, to this 4210000000, whatever, what I actually have. And I count the number of places I have to move it over, and that's my exponent. Notice I have to the power of positive 9. A nice easy way to remember this is 10 to the 9 is lots, right? That's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, all that 9 times. So bringing something to a positive exponent makes the number bigger. So that means I take 4.21 and I you know, make the number lots bigger. That's how I get here. See, so I can go one way and go to the right. I can also go this way and move to the left, so to speak. I can convert either way. I'll do another example, this time with something really small. Let's say I take some decimal number, so maybe 0 0.00, maybe 1308, something like that. That'll work. So if I do this then, same idea. I make a non-zero number sandwich, so I go from here, which is a leftmost non-zero number, here, which is a rightmost non-zero number. I have to write all of these numbers, 1308. 1308, that's the first step. Then what do I do? I take a decimal point right between the 1 and the 3. So I write it as 1.308. Now I have to do 10 to the power of something. So look carefully here. I want it to be here, but the decimal point is actually over here. And do you notice I'm doing the opposite way here? I'm trying to take my 1.308, which is actually a large number. It's much larger than 0.001308. In other words, I want to go the opposite direction. So I'm going to have a negative exponent here. It's going to be 10 to the negative something. And how many negative numbers is it? Well, I have my little sort of stealth decimal point right here, but it's actually here. So how many do I have to move? I move 1, 2, 3 to the left, so it's 10 to the minus 3. That's how we do it. We can convert from large numbers to scientific notation, but we can also go from scientific notation to large numbers. And same thing, we can go from very small numbers to scientific notation, or scientific notation to small numbers. And the trick is, remember, that if it's a plus, you know, for the power of 10, then that means it's actually making the number much bigger, so that's gonna be a big number. And if it's to the power of negative something, it means it makes it even smaller. See, it makes it, the decimal point went away and it made it even smaller number. I just wanna show you how we write this on your calculator as well. This might be useful. So calculator notation, we can also write scientific notation, things like this. So what if I want to write 4, 2, 1, and I have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, oops. Sometimes my calculator likes to jump around a little bit, 0, and I say enter. And I get a number here. Hmm. What I want to try to do is see what number this is equivalent to. Turns out this is the same thing as saying 4.21. Now your calculator, you can actually do times 10 to the power of 9. You can do that. But your calculator, at least if you use a TI-83 or TI-84, there's a much better notation. And it's this little EE. -E. See that little one right here? EE? -E? So it's just above this comma. So because it's color-coded, I have to press this yellow button to get this. So I say EE. -E. That means times 10 to the power of. So all I have to do is say 9. That's the same number. So 4.21e9 is the same thing as saying 4.21 times 10 to the power of 9. Notice it's the same number. Be very careful though on tests and things like that. Don't actually write this calculator short form, this little e. In other words, don't actually write down 4.21e9. Don't write it out on a test or things like that. It's not actually correct. This is just your calculator's shortcut for writing it. But it's a nice handy way to do it, isn't it?